Happy One Wheel Wednesday, everybody. My name is Scott Mendenhall. Pretty excited to be hanging with you today. We're, we're excited about the guest today. This is the second time him appearing on our podcast. So if you're brand new around here, you're here because we have the one and only Jack Mudd. Uh, thanks for joining with us. We're going to ask him. It's an all tell, all ask. You get to ask the questions to Jack Mudd, the chief evangelist. What a title. What a title. What a title. But uh, this is the Scott Mendenhall and Friends podcast. I got my good friends with me. One happens to be my best friend and my wife of 22 years, going on 23 in May. Yeah. Holly, drinking the Joe. Happy One Will Wednesday, everybody. Good to be with you. She's officially a writer for 70... Oh, no, no. You haven't gone 70 days. 50 some days. No, honey. Yeah. I started at 50 and you're at so oh, 20 sorry. something. I'm sorry. I've been writing me. for almost a month straight. She's a new one month. She was complaining about, ah, oh, can I, will I ever get I wasn't complaining. good. She was comparing got- herself to Mercedes. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? I love that girl. I love uh, that girl. Yeah. We got Lily over here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Rocking out the Dirt Surfers jersey today. Yeah, yeah, Both yeah. ladies wearing some racing gear today. Yep. Windmen, True story. Trail Race, and Dirt Surfers, one of our and favorite races. And we both races. have coffee. Yeah, it tells you what kind of she day is. it is around here. In the Minnesota mud. In the mid- I got nothing. Mm-mm. I got water. I'm a water guy. Speaking of water, when I got a chance to hang out with Jack almost a year ago out of the headquarters, that guy runs around with what is equivalent to, I think, a gallon of water. It was this oh, like massive, a, yeah. looks like one of those thermos or those water bottles you flip upside down. That you'd fill something with? Yeah, that you drink out of a work. He yeah. has his own thing with a handle on it. It was it was intense. <laughs> I remember correctly. That's what he's running around with. We'll check in to see if he's still doing that, if it's around. Uh, awesome. But uh, for those that don't know who Jack is, Jack is the guy that rocks the best haircuts ever. Mm-hmm. If you do a deep dive on their YouTube channel, you'll see the life of his hairstyles. He had real long hair, shaved it off because they met the the, the limit arms or selling pints. The guy's skilled in marketing. He is a genius when it comes to football, passionate about his his football team, which is the 49ers. This guy is well over six feet tall. You never know that on camera, but this guy is one of the most genuine human beings out there that just makes you smile when you talk to him. He asks you the questions when you want to ask him the questions. He is the most amazing human being that's ever graced this planet. This is Jack Mudd, everyone. How are you doing, Jack? Yay, welcome to the show. <laughs> Woo! Let's go. <laughs> I like that it just makes you smile. That's the whole point. If you just yeah. smiled at that, that's great. That's what we I want right it. there. I love a Scott Ben and Hall intro. Who doesn't, huh? <laughs> Jack, you should give Scott an intro. He actually no, I hate to put you do. on the spot, no, but no. I feel like I you could do it. Give you a, a, a Scott Ben Hall intro. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like it should start like, like fighting out of the this corner yeah, 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 yeah. with the wood background. Yes. Riding in the bitter cold every day for yes. the love of the game. Yes. <laughs> Always wearing sunglasses. With the yeah. coolest names of all time. <laughs> that's what, good. Yes. Yeah, that was what, good. Well done. Ah, what most that's that was so good. Well done. I don't think anybody's ever <laughs> taken on that challenge. Well done. Well, you watch Jack and now like this guy's got skills. Of course. He he, I knew uh, he could do it. He announces the ORL races every year, and it's hilarious. Uh, I think you and Ted are my favorite duo behind the camera at the Race for the Rails. I think you two just work off very well. When you, It was a bit of a callback this year uh, with uh-huh. Ted coming back, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's a good yes, call please. right there. What you guys Ted. don't know is that's how Scott – announces me waking up every day. Every day, day I, yeah, yeah. But come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was woo. <laughs> you and Ted though are were and are a good team. You just gotta admit yes, to that, right? Ted and I had a lot of fun, uh have had a lot of fun doing the the ORL work. Uh yeah. I feel like Ted probably has more adult beverages before commentating than, <laughs> than what is like regulated in the industry <laughs> yeah 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 for sure to be honest yeah <laughs> but you know he um, thanks for a good show a enthusiasm and uh, we have a lot of fun yeah like <laughs> I, I i enjoy ted and as you speak of adult beverages thing uh he'll post quite often not and he's not a big poster on instagram but when he gets on there he starts telling the story this is months ago he's trying to trying to fix his toilet and he's like i think this is a one beer project and like Seven, eight beers later, he goes, turns out this is an eight-beer project. <laughs> it went longer than he thought. And like I just thought it's funny. Most people will go, this is an hour project. Nope. Ted's no, like, no, nope, eight. measures in beers. Eight, eight, te- eight, eight. Uh, it was anyways. That, that, that's funny. He, the guy I saw him fixing his truck, and it was the same same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's common. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta like, love Ted. 
It might have gone, and I, I think I've left him some comments here and there at times. I'm like, it might have been a one beer project if you only drank one beer. But because you, it turns longer because it becomes slower, oh. nonetheless. <laughs> um, Ted, I, I love Ted. He, he, man, genuine human being there. Uh, Jack, where, you where? Said that you were watching, you were watching some old videos. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's yeah. why you got Ted, Ted on your mind. I yeah. do like, you know, our Groms, you know, we got eight kids. You spoke about their names and stuff and you got a 16 year old, but then you have our four year old who, you know, no idea those videos exist. And so uh, as a parent, you're always looking for like clean, fun videos that you're like, oh, yeah, you can watch this. So they were doing a deep dive on vintage one wheel videos and they they got to see Ted. Um, he, you know, when he was the race car driver that drove over the very so first funny. Carbon fiber fender, <laughs> right? Jed, right? Yeah, Jed what was it? Jed yeah. Ross. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. That's like, I mean, I probably watched it a couple of times, but it is ingrained in my mind. You know, like I, it was memorable. It's good marketing. Good no, okay, that leads me to the first question. And I know everybody in the chat. We're gonna get to the the stuff you want. Like, what are your thoughts, Jack, on Vesk? And Jack, what's you know? They all want this deep dive stuff. Okay, we're gonna get there. Okay, but we gotta have some fun here. So uh, when we see all these video projects that are happening, like you know the fruit one, or you guys recently t tested a helmet, uh, you know uh, a little bit ago, and they're just super funny and creative. How much are you in the behind the scenes creatively on those things? Mm, good question. I mean, we're pretty, you, you know, the whole marketing team. Um, yeah. We're pretty collaborative. It's not like very hierarchical. Right. Um, so it's definitely not a situation where I would be, you know, telling everyone, okay, this is what we're going to do. And then they go out and do it. Um, you know, Joey, Adam, um, now Kevin, Ryland, uh, we all have our own, you know, funny ideas or not funny ideas, mostly funny ideas. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Um, and then we'll just go, you know, sit down all together and talk through what we want to do and then, then we'll go do them. Um, so it, it's a, it's a, it's a fun environment to, to work in. Um, because it's almost like, I mean, I guess I'm the boss, but it's almost like there is no boss. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm goofier than most of them already. So, yeah, well, I mean, uh, yeah, we got a lot of freedom to go run over some avocados and stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> lately, the last time. video, the one of the last videos I saw of where where you guys were trying to demonstrate uh, how uh, how to ride a board or what some of the hurdles and you're in you were running around in your socks sliding on the floor. <sighs> and that's that's their all their bosses running around in socks. There's, yeah, yeah, I grabbed a pair of socks that I had I had been on a run in earlier that day, and so there was like some moisture content on the socks, and they did not slide well at all. That that, that was kind of a, a flop, if I was to be honest. But um, yeah, Adam Adam needed some help on that, so but um, that's yeah, what you got a lot of fun. That's what you got to love about, like, again, for everybody that it's trying to put on, you know, because you, your title is chief evangelist. And if you're not in the marketing world or like paying attention to what Google does or anything, people might go, what is that? What title is that? And it's you're you're over the marketing. You're the guy. You went to school to do this. And yeah, you're the boss, but you don't come off that way in the videos. You got to uh, even when we were out there, uh, everybody knows you were following your what you want, but you're always like, oh, what do we want to do today? You guys want to go ride the mountains today? Um, or, uh, yeah, the vibe at the how headquarters. Was, how was your uh, – what was your experience like, Scott? Because we haven't talked about – we haven't – we haven't – I haven't been on the podcast since the Rider Summit. Well, right. explain to the people. I mean, uh, you probably have done that already, but – Yeah, well, we – we put out a video that spoke about it, but man, uh, I loved it. I love what I, here's the truth of the whole thing. I love sitting there and hearing ideas, collaborating. That's one of the words we use in our world here. We collaborate on everything and then we put a question to it. Uh, did you work on the project alone? If you did, you didn't collaborate, so start over. And so we always pose to our ethos here, and collaboration is one of them. And so there was so much collaborative spirit out there. And then to watch the things we talked about start to come to play over the last 10 months or so, it's been really cool from yeah. firmware 
to the GTS. Now, obviously, it doesn't take much of a scientist to figure out. You guys were already cooking most of this up in the background because the GTS pops on the market all of a sudden. There's no way, you know, either might have done tweaks or something, but you guys are already doing that. Well, to keep your mouth shut, when we're all like, when Floaty's going, we need this kind of battery, and you guys are all chuckling in your head going, done. Um, or, or one of the other bigger things we all collect, foot pads that are actually flat. And you're like, <laughs> done. That's going to come. So uh, I think it was cool to have some thoughts shared and to see them playing out. Um, and, and, and again, I don't know if you guys are doing that again. It's like I said to Holly the other day, and I hope that all of us did good enough to get a bite back if there's ever a meeting like that. In the years, over the year, we've done well enough to educate ourselves and going, hey, what's some of the input we could bring to make that better i know for myself i left there going now i'm going to look at one wheels different and go what if i sat in that room again what would i offer because now you have an idea what you're looking for going what would i tweak what would i not to say it's bad it's just how do you continue to level it up and it can't just be about oh yeah make it faster because at some point speed is no longer <laughs> like come on i do like, not like speed these <laughs> the, they're you're seeing people start posting Oh, 36 miles an hour. And it's like, holy crap. On on a one wheel. Like you have you have I just yeah, that's uh, crazy. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. yeah. So uh, but again, there's people that like that. People hop on motorcycles and want to see how fast it'll go. I get it. Um, and so it, it was an honor to be out there. I'm wearing the hoodie today. Uh even I know. from that. It's my favorite hoodie. Like it I, I is. I, it's such a good hoodie. It's like the most <sighs> thickest hoodie that you can find. Yeah. And where we live, this is this is what you want. Uh, don't yeah. don't dry my hoodie. Make yeah, sure yeah. I told her so don't dry it longer. so it doesn't shrink. I can't I can't handle that. It fits right. <laughs> don't don't dry it. Um. So I don't know if I'm giving enough to it, Jack. I you thought, loved it. That's straight yeah. up. You loved. I, and I'm a better writer from it. Like I'm a better writer because yeah. because you watched everybody leave oh, you in the dust. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad that Adam was chasing me down the hill, and I never felt in danger. I just ride inside my limit a little bit. It's like, no, I do want to go run tomorrow, and so I'm okay picking up my board and walking. But when you got Adam, who's kind of the caboose, making sure I'm okay, it's like, no, I'm good, bro. I'm not gonna go keep up with Austin Silver today. <laughs> but I did go to my store when I came home. I was like, I gotta get faster. Uh, <laughs> that was too that. slow, um, and so. You talked a lot about just like how everybody just like values each other's thoughts or, you know, like the collab, like you just talked about how it's just like a very fun environment out there. I think I jo enjoyed Jack. One, you and I having a conversation, we, we were drinking beam, which is a recovery drink and, and talking about heart rate and fitness and all those things. So, um, I think it was fun to dream, but also to sit there and just, hear what you do like outside of one wheel um right you know, so uh, which that was one of the questions somebody sent in what is what is jack one of jack mud's greatest highlights in your life outside of one wheel whoa that's a, that's a big one isn't it hmm. <laughs> and maybe we in life outside yeah. of one wheel. that's a that's a great question unbelievably good question um it could take you to a dark I mean, spot <laughs> this is a bit of a cheesy highlight does highlight would you interpret highlight to mean like thing that i enjoyed the most or like something that i'm like proud of or i would or say like, both is it an achievement any and all i would think it's it's however you want to answer it so i think it can all be right. both whatever pops in your mind you're like oh this is how i'd answer it right now Huh. I mean, we stumped him right away. <laughs> what was the cheesy answer? There's, there's a lot of ways to take it, I think. Um, well, obviously, I'm very proud of of, um, of uh, just the one wheel world, you know. But that's um, inside of one wheel. Yeah, I, know, I, know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. But, it, but, but, you know, I, I've definitely uh, put all of my um, adult life work energy into into one wheel, so that makes it. That's why the question is hard to write. Because that's okay. Um, you know, that's, that's like my last 10 years there. But, um, <laughs> other than that, what am I proud of? I, I think I'm proud of like my relationships, um, mm. you know, with all, all sorts of different people, whether that's, uh, my girlfriend or my close friends or, um, people that I, you know, see less regularly, but still love to chat with and yeah. have a laugh with you included. Um, yeah, I think I'm, you know. 
I, I, I think that that's something that I'm, I try to do well and, and I'm generally pleased with just in terms of, um, yeah, I guess like, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that'd be one, but that's like a little bit of a cop out. That's like, that's not like, I I think that's amazing. That's that's a cop out because everybody wants like, like, (laughs) Like you're choosing people over stuff, you choose right? People. Come on, that's, that's amazing. It's good. I would think that's, that's yeah. a good answer. But, but if I had done an Iron Man like Scott, I would definitely do that one in front of. But do you really think Scott people. would say? <laughs> do you really think though that Scott would say an Iron Man over his eight kids and wife? You know what I mean? Like he's gonna go people oh, too. True. I bet. So. But you know what? When I get asked that question, answer. those like, things. No, Iron, Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny though, Jack, is when those questions get asked to me, I don't think about those things. Like, um, what? Though, like, I, I love teaching from those aspects of my life, but those are mm. I could just. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you and I are wired a bit similar. We don't look back very often. So, like, right. it, when, I'm stumped when somebody asks it because I'm not often. I don't. I'm not building my life on what I did yesterday. I'm building on what I'm going to do tomorrow. And, and what you had, like, used yesterday. Yeah, so tomorrow. it's not It's not a, I've got a list of accomplishments I'm trying to build on top of. It's like, no, who who's close enough around me? Even, even like, me, like, what do I, I randomly text you a, a bit, right? Uh, and go, hey, how about that football game? Or whatever triggers me. Here's how I got a prince in my life. And I, it's like, anytime I think of someone, I just text them. Because it's That's like, no. good. I'm thing. thinking about them, and I just want, to me, a text is a simple way of saying, hey, thinking about you, without just being cheesy and go, hey, I'm thinking about you, because that could be weird, but it's like, no, nah, <laughs> I'm checking in. Yeah. Uh, I, you live in California, I live in Minnesota, and, and what made our paths cross was a one wheel, and it's like, hey, think about you today, how's your football team, or what did you think of, of free, the free agency, or whatever it is, it's just saying, yeah. somebody in Minnesota cares, and so... Uh, that's I, I cheesy think as that's well. Awesome. I think that's I think that's a really good. Um, I I need to do that more. I do that a little bit, but I need to do that more. Um, because we all have that. You know, it's like you're thinking about your best friend from high school because you are listening to some song or something. Yeah, and, yeah. And but you, but it, it's like so easy to do that next step and and communicate to them that you're right. You know, uh, and, and that means so much, people. Um, yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, the other thing that I I will say <laughs> that I just thought of though. Good. We gave you enough time. Is, is um, so um, I've always wanted to play an instrument. Of course, everyone wants to play an instrument, right? And it's been one of these things that I've just talked about for years. You know, oh, like I should totally learn an instrument. I should totally learn an instrument. Um, l- one year ago, April. I don't know what the date was, but April something. Little, little less than a year ago. Um, me and one of my best friends we're just like, we were hanging out. We're like, man, this would be so much more fun if we could just jam. <laughs> right. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's what movies tell and us. I, I went on the internet and realized I could buy a guitar for like 150 bucks <laughs> and boom, done. Bought the guitar. Um, and I had this goal that was like, if I could play how lucky by John Prine, I don't know if you know, John Prine He's like a, a folk folk guy. Yeah. Um, for anyone listening, if you haven't heard, listen to some John Prine, I'd highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, if I could play How Lucky by John Prine, like I would be happy. That would be all I want to do. And I just figured, it's actually pretty hard to play. I just basically figured out, like, I can basically play the whole song now. That's yeah, that's come amazing. on. Well done. Super proud. That's Super awesome. Super proud about that. I That's mean, I highlight. still am terrible at guitar compared to like, you know, like lasers and laser. Yeah. Um, good, and talented. there's, uh, you know, people that are even better than him. Maybe. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself because it's one of those things where you're just like it, that, that dream could drag on for forever. Yeah. You not doing it, but saying that you should do it. And finally, I was just like, if I spent 30 minutes a day of not being on my cell phone, Mm. and just yeah, right. learning guitar i'll just know guitar in a year you're right here i am so yeah that's awesome. fired up about that and that's you, awesome and well you done. played a little bit at wasn't it uh was it seek and shred last year oh yeah yeah that was like <laughs> that was like five weeks in that was like five weeks in <laughs> that's awesome. um snake in the rain yeah but you played you, you, no matter what you did you got in front of people you faced a fear because come on you were nervous right 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I say to people all the time, you should do one thing that scares you a day. Most people won't do that. So at least once a week, do something that makes yeah. you go, I don't know. I'm nailing that one. Totally. Yeah. I, I one wheel every day. Holly's Holly, Holly it, <laughs> she's figuring it out. Like she we're getting she right now, like, this is a first world problem, I get it, but like, you know. There's a lot of humans around here, and I love that you guys offered some program where you could trade in one wheels. Somebody asked me, "Oh, you oh, got yeah. a lot of GTs? Are you going to trade in your one?" It's like, no, I, it I have to hand them down. Off. Like, I don't. <laughs> if I trade it in, I still only have one board. I, I have uh, ten people that need boards around here, and so we in the new year started going, "Hey, let's see what happens if we ride our one wheels every day." And so. Five of the kids and me started on day one riding every day. I think the coldest we rode in was negative 25 degrees. Everybody's like, oh, one wheels don't work in the cold. We're proving it. It does. Um, and so wow. we've rode, today's day 80. Holly jumped in at 50. She's like, fine, you guys are all having this fun. I'm going to jump in. But <laughs> she has to borrow a board. When you say jump in, <laughs> it's not quite as smooth as what you might think. <laughs> So we don't have enough boards for mom. And so oh, you, there, well. if you can picture an adult woman on the side of the street waiting for the kids to come over and give her their board. Can so I she can your go board, ride. Please? It's hilarious. She's got oh. helmet on, wrist guards, and she's just waiting. Is it my turn it's yet? Good. For you. It's, it's, it's fun. It's all good. It's I'm actually enjoying good for it. You. Yeah. It's been fun. That's to, the key. It, to be honest with you, is we get a lot of people. How do how do you learn? How do you learn? And it's been something so much fun for our family. Um, you know, people always go, "Oh, you're just trying to sell one wheels." I'm like, "No, I'm just trying to sell sell you family fun." Uh, like <laughs> when we all ride together, there's just something different about it because it's everything the family's doing. It's an aspect that we are doing that's not ORL, though we take a lot of the crew to do that. But we as a family are doing this together. It's we talk at anytime anyone. Drop something new in this space. That's a conversation at the dinner that we're all relating in together. And so she's riding now. We're just kind of vlog styling on my Instagram every day. Her, oh, this is an easy when she went from pavement to grass. Wow, this is different. We're just documenting it all uh, as she hopes to race at dirt. Race is loose term, okay, Jack? <laughs> she's going to go down one of the hills at Dirt Surfers. Heck yeah. Hopefully hopes. the goal is on the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not tumbling down. The goal is to I stay believe. on the board. <laughs> I believe. I believe. Yeah. I believe. I believe. got it. But let's talk about that trade-in really quick. Let's get to the stuff that everybody's like, okay, yeah, you're talking yeah, all have, fluff stuff. We have a super list fun. It's not. Chat. This isn't. They, this is real deal stuff right here. But this is what people get annoyed with me is that I talk about We like to know who stuff. the people are. Well, like, and, and finally yeah. get to one wheel stuff. So, um, people are overrated. <laughs> yeah yeah uh that was a joke everyone that was not true don't clip that out on jack saying look he's only about <laughs> um but it, okay so let's get to the trading thing that just ended you extended it yeah. and made it worldwide um yeah great idea i thought Brilliant. that i mean how many years Trading have i heard program yeah there you go uh it got extended people yeah, every like time we launch go ahead every time we launch something you know, we get a lot of questions being like, oh, it would be super cool if we could do a, a trade-in program to trade in some of our old ones. Um, and yeah, I mean, this honestly was like a little bit of a trial concept. We weren't really sure um, if people would find it valuable or not um, right. and gave it a go. Um, just, you know, more options for people are better, I think. Um, and a ton of people uh, found it valuable and wanted and traded in their boards so um the other thing to me is just that the s series is so good yeah that uh particularly if you've been riding an xr and you've never ridden if you've been riding an xr and you've never ridden an s series it's like a it's not just like a little upgrade it's like massive particularly if you're um bigger a bigger person yeah i mean if you're anyone but but like for me if i go back to an X Oh, he got a phone call. Maybe. Guarantee you he got a phone call, everybody. If we can switch to us, that'd be great, as our tech table is uh, the tech table is trying to figure out what's going on there. We're still here. Don't worry. We are still Hang here. Tight, everybody. We're here. There you go. Jack, you're back? Can you hear us, Jack? We're back. Yeah. Did there you get a go. phone call? No. Uh, oh. I just said that this web page reloaded. It was using significant memory. Interesting. 
that's a new one. Sorry, Typically, that happens. That. We get a phone call, and so um, uh, our tech tape. Our tech table lost their mind for a second. They couldn't even switch back to me. It's just a black thing of us talking, um, which well, is... For people who just listen, it probably... They'll never they even know the difference. They never know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry for all those listening and stuff. It's we okay. are... I just... <laughs> oh, now you're muted, Jack. <laughs> His earbuds. <laughs> His phone. His there phone is oh, freaking out. <laughs> Black again. Oh my gosh. He's gone wow. black again. Um, what a roller coaster. It is a roller coaster. It's a journey. There he is. We can see him flickering in and out. Technology in California. Is... He's like, ditch the AirPods. Oh, it could be those. We're off the AirPods. We're off the AirPods. Um, we're uh, back. Okay. Uh, that's great. You were in the middle of saying you were trying this program and it worked so well. And, and I don't know if you remember where you were. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, we just uh, wanted to see if people would find it valuable. You know, um, want to trade in, get some credits uh, on old boards, and trade in to to get an S series. I know a lot of people have you know a bunch of boards as well too. So I think for for those people, it's especially valuable. Made those those coupons stackable, right? So you could trade in multiple. That XRs was amazing. Or, or GTs. Yeah, really, yeah. really cool that we did that. Um, and yeah, I think it's, um, I'm just excited about it because the S series is so, um, it's so epic of a, yeah. of a, a one wheel that, you know, I'm excited to get more people on it. Um, yes. particularly if you're coming from an XR, um, it's just like a, it's a massive, massive upgrade. So, um, how long is yeah, it pretty extended excited. for? How I think it ended the other it day, ended. Lou. Oh, but it said extended on the image. Yeah, that well, that's was an old image. Well, okay, someone asked in the chat. We, so it, we probably extended we, it once go. or twice. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, it, it, it got extended. And yeah, added uh, international um, folks too. So That's awesome. So I think there that's one of the reasons well, why. I think, whoever asked in the chat. I think, I think people are asking though. And I saw it in like your the Instagram and YouTube where they're like, "Oh, what are you gonna do with all these boards? Uh, refurbish them and resell them?" Was what a lot of what we will call trolls are saying. Um, but what do you? I mean, now you guys got these boards. What's do you have an epic plan that you can't share quite yet? What you're gonna do with those? But what or do yeah, you have a what plan? What are you doing with them? We're gonna we're gonna make so what I've talked about is making a giant statue of rails and um other parts yeah uh out outside of the office which i think would be pretty oh. sweet so that i don't know if that's gonna happen but that's what i'm that's one of the things that i'm pushing for yeah um but yeah you know we, we are definitely not gonna resell you know any of these boards right um for us liability is is really like a driver of you know <laughs> A lot of decisions and so um, right you know taking taking old boards that have been used and ridden and, and we don't know sort of like what's mm -hmm. what their history is you know it's 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 not an option to like you know dust them off and resell them um right. so so parts will be recycled too right we spend um it's really expensive to recycle stuff properly but uh we are doing that for um you know tires uh, all the metal components, um, batteries, right? Like all that stuff needs to be recycled properly. And um, so I think that's another big component of this too, is just like, if you had boards in a garage that you don't know what to do with, you don't know, how, like, you know, we took boards that aren't working, right? So right. Um, if you're someone who's like, I don't really know, <laughs> I'm that way with like batteries. <laughs> like I take right. my batteries out of my, out of my like electronic thing. I'm like, what do I, what do I do with this thing? <laughs> yes. um, so I know I know there's some people out there that are um, in that situation with their one wheel, and so I think that's one of the coolest things about um, this program too is that it just gives a, a pathway for people to dispose of things in in an environmentally responsible um, manner. So yeah, yeah, I, I we have listened to different people. You had uh, a guy by the name of Max on uh, at one point talking about he traded in so Several. many boards, but to hear he's like, well, I just started buying 
broken boards from people at a cheap price and, and then yeah, traded like them in. Like people started making this a hustle <laughs> of like, I'm going to collect oh, yeah. these and then turn them in. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's genius. Especially if someone's not Go necessarily, they have a one wheel and they're not necessarily in the world. They're staying up with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take and I, I do agree with it's a massive upgrade as we have an XR running around in our fleet of one wheels because we keep handing them down. And if you do compare an XR to a GTS, it's like another world. But I do also think GT to GTS, it's still you go, oh, wow. Um, now I know yeah. all our, our Veskies out there are going, oh, but if Vesk, you know, this, they go right into that and. Um, maybe this is where we go into the vest conversation, but you know, there is a massive upgrade and it's just, it's fun. I mean, it, the GTS yeah. is fun. You don't have to it's ride great. it maximum speed. It's like, there's just power. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Like you were saying, uh, people that are on a scale of, oh, you're up a little bit on your six foot five and you built muscle and you're heavier than me. Who's like 150 pounds when I'm wet. Uh, oh, it's not, boy, when I jump on that, it's a lot of fun. It just, yeah. And so it's, I, it's, I would say it's confidence inspiring, you know, oh, the biggest, yeah. The biggest thing about, um, the biggest thing about one wheels is that it is like a power dependent, thing sport right so yep. so power and torque are the are the you know really the most important um things to to i think inspire confidence for riders yeah. so um you know even though some people might think oh it goes faster you know maybe this is for more advanced riders which it can be um or i better be really good to be able to ride it, it i think um as we know since we ride one wheels um you control your own speed. You don't have to go that fast. And just having that extra uh, power available. If you watch that pushback video where you explain the yeah. chart of electric vehicles, right? Just think about your chart is much bigger, right? So you just have more uh, torque headroom at every point, um, which is which is basically what that confidence comes from, right? Yeah. That feeling of like, oh, this thing has me. Um, yeah. I, and I and I love yeah I love it and, and I'm a I'm not your racer guy and and I think when you say we control our own speed you do like I think that's some of those area uh, uh, what is it, um, it the the entry level for some people is like oh I'm gonna get on it and they just picture this thing just zipping across it's like no no it is you controlling it like you guys do demos all the time and you're getting noobs on this thing and they're starting to realize oh. It's so much more intuitive than I thought it was going to be because everybody pictures some cartoon character. Just a <laughs> pew, gone, right? I, it, I think that was me. Slow I down. Picture that. <laughs> yeah, I can't slow down. How do I get off this thing? And it's it's mm -hmm. it's very intuitive when you hop on the thing. Um, oh, okay, so let's go to the vest conversation since we're talking about it and people in the chat are going, oh, vest and float wheel and all those things. Even when we bring up the word float wheel, uh, there's just, you know, we just opened up a package right there just mm -hmm. by mentioning that. Um, but it, somebody wants, we will ask this, so I'm asking it before they even, uh, I can't read the chat and talk to you, but why can't Vesks be a race for the rail? Like the main event, what's the, are you just anti Veskers? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. So uh, I guess. The way that I think about it is that, um, you know, if you if you look at any sort of racing, there's always categories of what qualifies to be raced, right? So if you look yep. at stock car racing, for example, what is a stock car? Well, there's certain requirements of what you have to, you know, bring to the competition in order to race. And um, generally, you, in order to in order to understand the skill of the rider, there has to be controlled variables, right? So if everyone is racing on different hardware or technology, I'm racing a board that is, you know, a car that's 250 horsepower, you're racing one that's 150 horsepower. Well, we're not going to really decide who's the better race car driver now, are we? We're going right. to decide who brought the, the more horsepower or whatever. Right. So basically the, the, the ORL um, limitations are are in place are powertrain, right? So we all have the same powertrain, 
you can do whatever the hell you want with the rest of your board, uh, we will understand who the best racers are. Now, if you want to race whatever you make or bring, right, there's also categories where you can do that, right? There's open categories. Um, so for people that have that interest and, and, and want to do that, that's an option for them too. Right. Um, but yeah, so in our races, in the ORL races, I mean, in like, race trail is our race, right? The ORL races, <laughs> right. each organizer has their own um, rules. That they Wait, can place, you say that right? again? <laughs> yeah, each organizer chooses what to do with their well, race. I mean, what the is race like for the rails? Right? <laughs> organizers got to decide. I mean, in this year too, organizers get to decide specifics on their own races, right? But in the ORL category, yeah, you have to be on a board that, that has a, a powertrain that's a one-wheel powertrain. Right. Um, but yeah, in our race, in Race to the Rail, I mean, like, we might have different rules um, than even the, like, we might have more specific rules than, than the overall ORL regulations, right? Like, right. for example, footholds are legal in the ORL this year. We may make footholds illegal in Race to the Rail. And that's just, I mean, ultimately, that's why because it's my decision and yeah. our decision yeah 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 you, and, and to be clear because yes. you say that and then you it's not yeah. my but you do have a committee that's collaborating yes. on, on yeah. oh, oh well, I'm sorry i mean race the rail race yeah. the rail is very much my slash sarah slash adam slash joey's decision right yeah uh, orl orl is completely different and and we talked about this before right i actually disagree with some of the orl decisions right like if I, if it was up to me, I would do things a little bit differently in terms, of, particularly in, in terms of footholds, which we were talking about earlier. But I think yeah. it's fantastic that whether I disagree or not doesn't really matter, right? Like, right. This uh, because we have a committee, like these rules can be made um, in a way that's independent, and so I think that that's I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Even though I don't particularly love footholds. Um, yeah, and you and I, I agree respect, upon that. I respect the <laughs> yeah, I respect the the decision. Um, right. But yeah, so I so I I think I think that shows strength of the of the the sport, you know, at the end yes. of the day. Yes. I I keep trying to explain and I I I think what we're running into and I we I I, I don't work for one wheel just to clarify often times people think I do. Can you want Jack to put that in a Yeah, segment? yeah, Jack, can you just <laughs> confirm that I do not work that for one wheel? That last check came through, Scott. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's cleared that out. That That's guy. Hilarious. Jack, you rock. Thank you. Thank you for that. You're a good man. No, I'm waiting on that, Jack. I mean, if that's the case, I work for one wheel, everyone. I uh, lost in this. But um, you you have, like, you guys are putting on the, the main race that you're saying, this is our race that we are paying fully for. Somebody else can go and create another race and have a different set of rules that they are paying for. And if you want to get into sure. their race, you've, you've got to qualify their way. Uh, it's like this. In, in marathon, the goal, there's like three races that are like the pinnacle of marathons. One is Boston. And the only way to get into Boston is to run a certain time, you cannot have headphones in. You cannot wear certain shoes and all these different things. When somebody starts to break down, how do I qualify for Boston? It's different mm -hmm. than if I show up to that same race and just want to be a guy that's like, I just want the medal. I want a picture. I just want to cross the finish line. I don't care my time. But if you're going to qualify, you can't have headphones in. You're disqualified. You can't have a wow. certain Adidas shoe in because they got carbon plates in them. It's com considered right. an unfair advantage. I can't wear those if I want. That's right. all that is in, in in this realm of racing for one wheel. We're going, hey, if you want to get to the dance, the di whatever dance you want to show up at the end of the season, here's how you get there. Somebody asked sure. just in the chat with the footholds, like why let them in these other races, why let them use footholds if they're not going to be able to use them later? And that's really right. just up to the race who's ever it's a running. a good question. Whatever race racers, they're riding. Totally. It's a good question. Fair question. And that's why some racers don't use footholds all season because when they get to race the rail, I mean, Tyler, right? Tyler doesn't use footholds. Um, when he gets to race the rail, he doesn't have to make an adjustment. Whereas yep. some other racers do have to. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, you know, we could, we could, we could say no footholds, but I think, I think less regulation is really better most yeah. of the time that being said without structure there will be no growth and that's basically 
that 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 is proven in every sport that's ever been developed basically yeah right if you look back at like i mean nascar is a great example because car racing came up in the south like with with moonshine the moonshine <laughs> era right and people developed cars that could beat the cops you know right to get away um and then they started racing them informally right and it wasn't until they came together and were like, okay, this is a thing. We need some structure. Um, right. And that's what's going to make this legitimate. That's what's going to, you know, push it forward. Um, without that structure, it's like, you, it's just, it's, it's friends in the side street, you know, seeing who's fastest, which is very cool and which is super fun and which also can, should happen. Yeah. Um, it happens all but, the time, you know, there, but it's not legit. Be, there has to be, I mean, the NFL, right? Like, there are, I'm a big NFL fan. You're a big NFL fan, Scott. The, the, yep. the, there is a league that has rules for each team, right? And each team has to engage under the same rules. Like, okay, we can only spend this amount of money, mm -hmm. um, you know. Right. And that gives people an expectation in which to compete, in, in, you know, in a level playing field. And right. I think if you don't have that, um, it's chaos. You, yeah. What do you, like, what do you have? <laughs> you know, what is it? So right. I, I think, um, I, I understand people's desire to, you know, uh, have no rules and do whatever they want. And I right. fully support that for their own fun having. And if they want to throw races where that's their mantra, I think that's great too. I mean, we have open divisions in almost all of these races, right? Mm -hmm. So that is an option for you to bring whatever you want and race whatever you want. Um, but, um, yeah, just in terms yeah. of like the, the things that we pour our energy and money and, you know, all that stuff into, um, we, we have some rules. So, yeah, I, I think, again, this is where people think I don't have my own opinion. My opinion just aligns to a lot to what you're saying. Cause it makes sense to me. It's like, yeah, uh, I, I get it. It's you guys are funding the race. You get to choose that race. People would say, oh, one wheel squashing the the whole industry. It's like, no, this is just their race. And they're saying, if you want to come race here, this is what you got to do. <laughs> if you want to go race over here at another race, that's what then you got to do. do. Just no one else is doing it yet. Like, uh, yeah. no one else, like, right, we could do. And we could I, get, I get why not, because it takes a ton of resources. <laughs> it takes yeah. a ton of resources. Like, mm -hmm. If you knew the amount of money in time that we put into uh, just making this a real thing, right? It's like mind boggling, particularly the money right. part. It's like, it's, 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 yeah, it's insane. And, I, um, but, but any event of that scale, that's where, like, I just think some people that are squawking, they have no concept of how to do what it requires manpower, hours, and money to do a scaled event. Uh, of those sizes it's just and even with the races like dirt surfers and windmen those events mm -hmm. <laughs> have a lot of money and time sunk into them yeah and really yeah. like our whole goal behind the racing is just to legitimize the sport of one wheel like that's the entire thing right yeah and to build as big of a platform as we possibly can to for these riders to shine yeah and, and become stars in our little fishbowl that we're in you know yeah. and try to convince people that it's a little bit of a bigger fishbowl than maybe they thought. And, um, you know, and that's why like the prize purse is, is what it is. And that's why, you know, we work hard to make sure that like visually, um, it looks a certain way, right. It, it, it has a certain, um, polish to it. Yep. We work in race the rail particularly, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's why, people like ESPN two are willing to air it. Right. Because mm -hmm. it fit it, They've basically said, okay, this is legitimate. This fits. And, and that's, that's really like all we're trying to do is to legitimize the, the sport. Right. And so, um, yeah, I'm actually pretty yeah. proud of, of the fact that's that it's awesome. gotten to that point. You um, should be, man. Like seriously, so. you, you, your whole team should be super proud of of everything you guys are doing in the new products that are dropping in just this last year. You should be real proud. Uh, I know that you don't probably get that very often from a bunch of people that are telling you what you should have done or could have done better or you stole this idea or whatever. But you guys are doing mm -hmm. a, you're doing a great job. It's a lot of work, a lot of work to dream it, build it, and mass produce it. Those things don't just oh, yeah. happen. 
that that takes yep. a, a lot. Um, and so, which leads me to the next uh, question: is as since the ending of the whole thing with the CPSC, all of a sudden you guys have flooded the market with a new board, new products, new like more. Um, more uh, what, what, uh, rights to repair stuff on your website where you can just go and just geek out on like, oh, I need to fix this part and I got this part and all these things. You got, I mean, it's just flooding. And you guys are yeah. doing what you said you would do. Um, and, and so life after CPSC, do you feel a, a lot of more room to get going and creating again since that's mm. over? Yeah, I think so. Um, life after CPSC. Yeah, uh, pleased with how that resolved. I think that that resolved in really the best case scenario that it, that it possibly could have. And a, a big shout out to all of the people that wrote letters um, because I think that was a big, big moment early in that in that saga. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely like a, a little bit of a breath of fresh air. And just that took a lot of time, you know, that took a lot of time uh, behind the scenes. And Scott, you got to see some of the stuff not even on like a engineering side, but just like even even on a marketing <laughs> team side, you know, just took a lot of um, bandwidth to to yeah. sort of communicate with with them as as well as we could to explain the product, how it works, who who it's for, how it's used. Right. Um, so um, so yeah, you know, we've been. It seems like we've been cranking since then. You yet you mentioned <laughs> there's a number of things that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, like yeah, excited about excited about a lot of those. I mean, the the S series was like the the big one, right? And that was like immediately after that resolution, which was which I it, thought was fantastic. Yes. Um, yeah, so, it's like that's in our rearview mirror. Now let's get on to yeah. <laughs> check this out. Yeah, it did yeah. feel a little bit yeah, like good. it did feel a little bit like doors closed. Cool, we got some way cooler. Yeah. Whatever you were talking about is that we've got uh, so well played. I I chuckled a little bit in it in in. And even the way you guys did the the announcement on it, it was super, really well done. I just think it was. So, yeah, cool. that hits. And then I think the next thing that drops is, man, is it the low boy foot pads you guys drop? I don't remember in order. Yeah, but a in bunch of accessories. Um, uh, uh, well, I guess Pro Team was before CPSC, I suppose. It yeah, was. It was. We had, you know, yeah. the motor, the the the, the motor, motor is stuff, awesome. The parts stuff, right? Like, and that's yeah. going to continue. That'll everything will be um, replaceable. Uh, yeah. You know, it it takes a little bit of time to make sure that you roll all this stuff out in a way that is responsible. Yeah. Um, it, particularly like the the motor, the batteries. Um. Well, probably particularly the batteries in the controller, I suppose. Yeah. But um, that's all in the works uh, um and i know a lot of people were excited about that um so i think that's huge yeah, yeah it's like i don't know 60 plus parts or something that you can now buy on the website xr what? and and whatever so um so i think that's big people people that want to fix their their own wheels have some more some more resources there which is great um yeah, uh, yeah and, i can it's again for those that are that do like there are going to be people watching and they're going to think you know they're going to be squawking about right to repair and all these things it's like and you guys said long ago we're going to do that <laughs> they just think oh while well, you're battling this big thing over here are even we going to be able to still ride one wheels <laughs> you're not going to keep creating and do it's like we got to win this thing before we can do the rest of the things we've said and then you can just see yeah. where you guys are doing what you said you would do now everybody yeah. Wants it now. That's not reality. I sure. have eight children. They all want everything now. <laughs> it's like, right? It's like, no, that's not going to happen. That's impossible, actually. What you're asking to be done, uh, no, you don't know any of the, the ins and outs of it. And that's a lot of we are asking you guys to do something. We have no idea what it takes. Um, sure. Or, or what legal. Yeah, everything, everything takes takes time for sure. But, um, you know, I I definitely feel like our our head and our heart are in the right place, and I think that we're we've done a bunch of stuff, and we're yeah. still doing a bunch of stuff that hasn't come out yet, and that I'm excited for. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it it is kind of cool to look back. Like, I mean, particularly you know, if we if we look back to 
whatever it was a year ago at that rider summit like a ton we've we've yeah. really, we have done a lot so i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty excited um yeah you to see all that i mean yeah pro pro team even, i was gonna say you were talking right? about the pro um, team and that has to help in this uh of moving things along because now you have people that can test stuff and tweak stuff for you and then get it to to us yeah oh it's huge it's amazing um I mean, uh, we also did like a, a firmware update for S series with gradient tracking and stuff like that, and like, yeah, yeah. it's it's it, it's very cool um, to see the the development loop get um, faster. I think, right? And just and, and as you mentioned, without the CPSC thing, it's like it de- definitely clears up a, bu- a bunch of um, bandwidth too. Yeah. So. Now I I got a question that everybody's asking in the chat and in 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 they want to know uh, when you talk about firmware they want to know they want to know digital tilt is that ever going to come so they can ride other rails now I'm going to add a piece on there well I have an idea here's I I have an idea that could make this but I think it's going to be there's his water bottle. Yeah, but sorry, is it as big as it was? I think that you've downgraded your water bottle. Take a sip. That's huge. No, it's sixty four ounces. All right, you're winning. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. You're well done. Yeah, that took up the entire camera. Um, I, but I do, <laughs> maybe I, I don't know how I should ask a question because I have an idea that you've probably already thought of because you got the engineers and people way better than me. But it's like, I have a solution, but no one's going to like it because they're going to like, oh, oh, one wheel is stealing ideas. Pass along, Scott. Well, should I? I'll, I'll let you answer the question of the digital, and then we'll how you answer it. I got an idea that could be a solution um, to to the the problem. So, what what's your thoughts on digital till so they can ride their aftermarket things? Like one wheel should be creating stuff for them to do this. I it's a bit weird, but hmm. what's your thoughts? Uh, you know, I'm not particularly opinionated on on it. Um, I I see it in the in the comment section quite a bit, and I think it's something that um, they're discussing. And I don't you know I don't know how it'll, how it will end up, but um, yeah, sure maybe sure possibly. sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> good answer okay yeah. when I say those words <laughs> yeah yeah when well, I say those words to know, my like, kids they always go what does that mean mom yeah. Yeah. sure mm-hmm. possibly maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well you did say it's in the works <laughs> you know there's yeah maybe there's i think we, we were just well, talking that's about something a minute ago that's like oh am i frozen nope you're good oh i'm back um one of the big things is, is also like uh prioritization right because because yeah. you only have so much time right so it's like Oh, we'd really like for for one wheel to do X Y Z. You know, we want a repair center in Europe. We want, um, <laughs> you know, digital tilt. We want a board that has better this, that, or the other thing, right? And so you end up needing to to prioritize certain things, right? And so I, I while I personally, I think the the digital tilt thing, like, sure, why not make things easier for people? Per, like that's that's my yeah personal perspective on it um i don't really yeah i don't really um yeah i don't have like anything against it right i just don't know if it'll if it'll make it to the top of our like you know list of what we want to prioritize to to um, invest <laughs> yeah. time and resources but in i also think like i i think when people can think practically on some of these things it helps us like okay is digital like the people that and I go, I get it. You got to take care of those that own boards currently, but also you're trying to, it's a business, so it needs to make money. I don't know if digital tilt sure. is a selling thing for uh, somebody that doesn't even know about those other rails. I do think here is a solution mm-hmm. that I think it is, if it fits into the framework, right? Like is you guys dropping rails that are optional other rails that you can get um that are a certain style because i think there is a danger for 
noob guy, noob girl getting a one wheel and they don't know what digital tilt is and they flick it too far one way and all of a sudden they're like, what's going on with my board? I've totally just made this thing do something stupid that they can't figure out. So I get it. That's a limitation to somebody buying a board. However, if it's no longer digital tilt where I slide it, I put in there, I bought these rails from one wheel and I click it and it just tilts it to what it needs to be level for those. Then all of a sudden it's a toggle. It's either on or off for this rail, yeah. that rail. And then it's just that way. And then if other companies want to go, well, that fits our mold already. There you go. Just toggle that on. And it's an easy interface because I think that's what you guys do so well. It's very intuitive app. I don't, I don't get lost. Like one of my complaints about Vesk is like, what am I doing here? How do I undo what I just did? It's just complicated. It's not user friendly at all. And so... I get called an idiot for that, and, and I am. <laughs> I am. I don't know no, what I'm not, doing. Baby. Um, but I think that's a solution that makes it safe, in a in a sense. But again, that opens up another door where people are gonna go, "Oh, there's one wheel stealing other people's ideas." I don't. I just. <laughs> it's like, how do you even know one wheel didn't have that idea? You just prioritize different things besides getting to. Let's just call it soft foot pads, right? Like, okay, sure. it's on the list. Let's let's tackle that now. Which, yeah, uh, that, I mean, that could, that's, a, that's not a bad idea. I don't know. Um, I, I get it. You don't need that. I'm not <laughs> looking to put you on the spot. I mean, it's a tough one. I, yeah, I mean, no, I think that's fair. This is one of those things where like, I, to be honest, don't have a super strong take or opinion on just because um, I'm not that user. I'm not that right. writer, you know, I'm, I'm so for me, it's not coming from a place of passion. It's like, oh, right. I hear this. Like, you know, we should think about it. You know, someone's yeah. thinking about it. Great. Okay. Great. <laughs> we, we talked about it. That's great. Uh, it, it pleases like we, people <laughs> to have asked yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think um, pleasing people, whether they are riding, you know, a completely stock board or, or a board with aftermarket products is a good thing to do in general. You know, yeah. and I think... Um, so I, I, so I think, so I, I believe that, um, but yeah, again, like I don't, I don't have like a, I don't, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking of the solution or, um, or I guess mostly just thinking of the solution or really yeah. even the problem. But I think that the problem, you know, uh, is thought of and, um, yeah. you know, particularly I think some of these people like, you know, Austin and, and Neil and, um, and all them, I think that that's something that they, they think about more than, more than I do. So, um, <laughs> I don't have yeah. a hot take. It's not like the footholds for me, you know, where I'm like, yeah. I know what I believe in and this is fight for, uh, although I didn't really fight for it. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, digital tilt, like, you know, you can take it or I, leave it. You're saying take, take or leave it in general. Yeah. Like, I think it's a nice thing. You know, I don't know if it'll, I don't know where it stacks up on, on what we're prioritizing basically. Yeah. Maybe, so, um, I would love to know what you're prioritizing, but we're on air, so you can't say that. So <laughs> I get it. Um, uh, but uh, uh, let's see, what are we prioritizing? Um, there's gonna be some cool stuff coming out for sure. Uh, the pace of play is high. Um, some some cool accessories coming out that um, have not. There's not like other other things in the one wheel market that that currently um, do them. And then um, yeah, I, I'm excited for for what what's in the pipeline in yeah the i'm i can't wait i i i, I can't wait I, I i gotta get myself on the list that we are part of the debut that'd be sweet oh. like as it drops here oh that'd be yeah that would be just, good can, can just you answer I, that just because i want to be in the know <laughs> that's all it is that? tyler talk to tyler tyler could probably get you on the list <laughs> I gotta get to that guy, Tyler. Man, where are you at, man? I'm I, a... I feel like Jack just like passed the baton for to... someone else to deal with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Scott's too much. Go to you. Know what the like. problem. I'm pretty irresponsible. The problem is that Tyler's like more irresponsible than I am. Yeah. So I actually don't know if that's a good solution. But <laughs> no, I, I get it. Hop on it's a, a plane. Good yeah, yeah, I got you. That's I got great. you. Uh, that's so good. Okay, let's talk about the one wheel documentary. You guys been doing these demos. You did this uh, amazing. If people haven't seen it, like, let me ask this. So you're doing the demos, but you got it up on YouTube. Uh, I think I checked last time. It's twenty one thousand views Holy since December. Cow. Uh, 
Is that was that where you did you have a number you were hoping to hit? Is that satisfy you in the views? Are you looking long term? What does a year look at at that? Um, and then what are the demos like when you're doing demos with being able to show the video to those that are watching? How have those been going? Yeah. Um, so you're talking like the 113 film yep. that we shot. Um, yeah. Yeah. We did not. We definitely didn't approach it with a view count in mind. Um, basically, we just, you know, we signed the pro team. Yeah. Um, and we released the S series board. And we just want to go do the coolest things that we could do. Spend a couple weeks and, and um, go um, find some really cool terrain and try to do some stuff that hadn't been done, you know. Yeah, which before. they're seeing right now. Yeah, and yeah, so this is some really epic. This is, this is epic. I, I think if you haven't watched the behind the scenes video that, that we came out with about this which most of you haven't because it's only got like three thousand views or something what go watch the go watch the behind the scenes because i think um this was a, a bit of a bigger challenge than than it almost looks easier than it is i'd say on, on video when we went here i had been to this location like five years ago before before shooting this and four years ago maybe we had we had pints with us in the van at the time <laughs> and we couldn't do anything we couldn't do anything and so when we went back i had we had zero idea when we showed up if we would be able to if any of this would be rideable if it'd be too steep um what the sand composition would be like whatever right. um and so it was it was pretty cool to sort of watch these riders go explore and find these new places that, Oh, we can ride this and then kind of like keep continually push each other and support each other and take it all to um, the next level. So that, that was, that was, that was the goal um, in and of itself um, was to shoot a really cool movie. I think I'd like to shoot a really cool one wheel movie once a year at yeah. least mm -hmm. like proper, proper, proper like that. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll do more edits and whatnot, but, uh, yeah. but that was the goal. So, so, um, and you accomplished like, it, bro. That oh, like, we've totally. watched a lot of skateboarding documentaries <laughs> and was... snowboarding documentaries. It's right in there with the best. I know you, the it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was, it was family movie night at the Mendenhall. Oh yeah. I mean, it was like, oh. that's pizza night. That is like, everybody sits down. You got your It spot. came out like <laughs> right before Thanksgiving, I think, or somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. And, and we were at Holly's family's house, and, and, and there were, I don't know, 50-some people, and we just huddled around a big old TV and watched the thing. Yeah, it was awesome. So your You're view counts. our views there. I know. That, that I know. That's well, don't worry. We've gone back and watched <laughs> yeah, it like 1,600 it. times. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. care what one iota about about the views. I think um, we, were, we were in it for, for, the, for the right reason. But, it was um, awesome. Yeah, it, and you meant, we mentioned on the pre-show there is a director's cut where the the music is is way better, and that's because we had a timeline to get it dropped. We were on a super tight timeline, and we edited it to we edited it while we were on the road, wow. um, and we had these tracks that we loved, and unfortunately we couldn't license them because they cost too much money. Yeah. So in the 11th hour, we had to abandon all of our, basically redo the timeline. Like mm -hmm. it, it, we had like one and a half days to redo the timeline and find new tracks. So oh my God. wow, it definitely was rushed at the end with what came out on YouTube. Okay. Um, the director's cut is sort of like how it was intended to be seen. So if, if people in Santa Cruz got to watch the director's cut, uh, we recently did a demo in Santa Barbara. Um, so those folks got to watch the director's cut too. Um, and uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely like the purest form of the film. And uh, we'll have to show you uh, sometime when we come to Minnesota. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. You heard it here, folks. We, we, when I heard there was a different soundtrack, I was like, what? <laughs> uh, and it's better. I was like, what is going on? So for those that are like, why would I want to go to these demos where you guys are having these viewing parties? It's because you haven't seen it in the right way. Uh, it's, it, I would, I would agree with that. 
I would I would say that everyone that's that knows it, everyone that's intimately involved with the project, would also agree. Yeah. With that. Austin said that the music is just so better. And I was like, because again, I had no perspective of that till he had just shared that with me. And I was like, I can't, I don't know the soundtrack. So what I see, it's like, man, I thought it was great. It, it was good. Yeah, it was. It, it fit well. So to hear that, it's like, oh man, now, now I have a bad oh, case no. of I want. <laughs> great we job. Can, we can figure out a way. One Wheel's really good at that. Creating, yeah. I didn't know I wanted that until you do it. And then now I want some, some more. So great job. You guys are really good at the marketing. Um, proud of you guys for that. Yeah, proud of it. <laughs> Real proud of it. That's okay. I mean, my kids, you know, they're 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 on a strict diet of rice because of one wheel, but that's okay. We don't yeah. I'm just, I'm just I'm that that is a joke that was not um, but I, I, again that if for those that haven't seen either one of those behind the scenes or that I don't know what you're watching on YouTube, stop watching now and go watch that. You will be it's just very enjoyable. Uh, for every place you shot, it's like, I want to go ride there. I think the shot where you guys ride by the sphere in Las Vegas is like, that's just amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think that the the urban stuff segment is probably my favorite segment that I thought I like it better than the, the crazy off-road stuff at the end. Um, but the other thing that I'll add is that there's some stuff in the behind the scenes that didn't make it to the film that, that I thought was like really the highlight of the trip for me, Yeah, which was, there was this one line that Mercedes was trying to make it down. Yeah. She spent, I mean, days trying to do, and you know, she's crashing again and again and again like literally hours you know and then we'd go back the next day and in hours again and um it was just like such a mental battle for her Mm. and it was super emotional um and finally we you know she's like taking a break and we went and filmed some other section uh some other rider and she went and just like was doing practice laps, <laughs> which is like totally not cool. No, I'm yeah. Kidding. But uh, Austin just was filming on his cell phone because they have this whole method of like filming what you do and, and right. rewatching it to get better. And she she did it, completed the line successfully, but only on cell phone. So yeah. that's why it's not in the movie. And it's also why Mercedes has a pretty short part in the movie because she spent – I would say 90% of her time um, attempting one line. So it's pretty epic though that you, that you don't see. Yeah. And she accomplished it and she was crying. Oh yeah. You know, it, it was, it was a super emotional moment um, uh, when she did. So that's just one of the things that you don't see in the, in the film that um, you do see in the behind the scenes thing. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the behind the scenes mm-hmm. for sure to see that footage because it's sh- you can tell that what's shot on the video or on the phone because it's in vertical form versus horizontal. So everyone, you will catch what he's saying, uh, and it's like your heart just goes out. Oh, uh, how much dedication oh. the athletes did in every little role? You're just going, no, nah, that's not just a one shot. Now some of them might be, but it's like no, that took a lot of repeats and repeats and repeats. Yeah. Totally. Uh, that was wild. Um, and, and I watched it, and I'm like, now I have new bucket lists. I'm like, I want to ride in the sand dunes. I want to ride in Las Vegas. Um, so way to create, a bad, again, another bad case of uh, I want. I want to ride like them. I want to ride in those locations. Great job. The last location, the last location is a bucket list riding location. At the end of the shoot, I, I rode. I went down like the one spot. Thing that they were going down that was like the easy one for them yeah and it was really really fun but <sighs> also a little scary oh yeah but really really fun yeah but that's some of the that when for those that go from that beginning stage to riding in trails there's this progression of like there's some part of this sport that is like yeah it keeps me feeling alive like that feeling of like oh that's that's exciting. Like I know some people don't like that, but I like that about the, uh, the sport and one wheeling is that I can be chill, cool, and zen, 
And then I can also go and be slightly panicked and am I going to not make this? or what? And that's the beauty totally. of the sport. It can be both. So, um, Okay, uh, we're going to wrap this thing up. But it's 10 years. 10 years, one wheel's been around. You've worked for one wheel for 10 years. Anything, like is there anything in the works for the 10 years that we – uh, can know anything about the 10 years. I mean, that's a pretty big deal for a company to make it 10 years. You outlet. I was thinking about this the other day as I've, I've been around with the sport for a long time now. Uh, we have, uh, we came in right as the plus was being introduced. So that, that's how early in the game we were. And so then the XR and all, the whole journey. And it's like where we are today. It was like, I didn't even see that come in. Like, now these trail races are happening, and it's like, this is wild. In 10 years, this is where this for. I mean, early on, remember, all videos that were created, it seems like early on in the days, one wheel versus skateboard, which one should you buy? You don't even have those conversations anymore, right? <laughs> boosted board is gone. That was like what everybody would compare. Well, what should I get, a boosted board or a one wheel? And now you're, it, it, it's just been a year. of 10, 10 years has been pretty cool, bro. Um, so what's the plan to celebrate it? That's a great question. Um, yeah, 10 years. So we started shooting like a little like history thing, which is funny to do, okay. but cool. Yeah. Um, so Kevin is working on, yeah, like a little, a little, a little his like documentary, I suppose, of, of the, the process in the, in the project. And, um, you know, as part of that, we like went back to Kyle's old, post-college garage um someone lives there now so we were just you know outside but um <laughs> but yeah creepy you know kind of getting getting those stories and um go, went back to like the first office space that we ever worked That's in cool. and um you know doing some of that stuff so um yeah, that, I mean that's like just that's a, a little thing that we we were chipping away at these last right. couple weeks. But um, yeah, I think they'll they'll be we made, we made the conscious decision that we don't feel the need to celebrate ten years on the exact anniversary. Like, there's a lot of different anniversaries that we could choose from within this year. Yeah, right. Um, you know, like we announced one at CES on January fourth or something like that, right? So that was kind of like maybe that's like the anniversary, but we didn't ship the first one wheels until like September, I want to okay. say, you know, that's like when the first people in the world had one wheels. Um, and so that, that could be one too. So we're kind of like in a, in a stockpiling, um, zone right now. Like we're kind of yeah. getting our stuff together and we will definitely have some, some things to celebrate with. Um, maybe in a little party out here that's low key too, but, um, yeah, it's it is something to celebrate. You know, it's it's uh, I was it's it's easy to it both feels like a long time and, and no time at all. Yeah. Um, but it's super hard to, to do anything for 10 years and it's super hard to get anything off the ground. You know, I yeah. think most most small businesses don't don't survive. And so, um, yep. yeah, like definitely has surpassed my expectations. When I started, you know, I was on like a six week social media contract, uh, six unpaid. weeks. Yeah. And I was, I was like, best case scenario. I remember it was so funny. My, my, my main initiative was like, if I absolutely crush this and we do good, I might be able to get a one wheel out of this. <laughs> that was, that was, yeah, my, yeah. That was like my highest aspiration right. was to, to get a one wheel out of the arrangement. And, um, uh, yeah, I still hardly own one because every time I buy one, it gets taken by the market. It gets put in the mar marketing van and then I don't never see it again. Yes. So, um, you know, but yeah, I got, I got more than I bargained for. That's, um, but, uh, but again, a, a fantastic way. I think when people like people, I, I, I wish people would put into quantify that wait you've worked with a company for 10 years how many people work for anybody for 10 years that says something about the environment in a positive light of one wheel that that it, there's not a huge turnover deal there obviously there have been people that have like we were talking about ted at the beginning obviously people move on like you're gonna always have that but like you're still there's just a core team of people that are still there in in just this really fun environment uh the vibe is really really nice when i was out there it's like oh this is 
what you hope to create in, in, in what what would be in a business environment that's not too stiff necked not too loose but it, so uh, I, I think it's pretty cool that it, you guys have made it this far that to watch I, I was thinking about this the other day knowing that you were coming on here that you went for to do sports stuff right like that's kind of what your I forget your actual title but like wasn't it something to do with sports yeah I studied uh sports business at, okay. at Oregon okay and you're creating a sport like you literally yeah. are, you're not even coming in to manage one. I just like, here's a guy that went to school to learn to business, sport business kind of deal. And you're creating right. one from nothing. That's amazing. Okay. That you don't pat yourself too much on your back. And I know there's a big team around you, but when there's a racing league that never existed before, it's like you're creating something that wasn't there before. Obviously people are going to poke fun at you it's it's this is the same I, I hear all the time the higher you get on the ladder the more people that can look up your pants or your skirt right so the higher the more you perform there's just more people that are still on the ground and they're gonna go i see your underwear and and don't let that distract you keep climbing because it's gonna be fun to see what the next sure. couple of years uh and like you're creating a sport you're not managing somebody yeah, else's obviously sport. obviously it's 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 a community led thing too right you know obviously everyone is a part of it that that is in the one wheel game um and so and and that's been amazing it's just like not every product has that same level of like that same the people that participate in different um products environments or or what have you don't have the same appetite to create you know turn it into a culture and a sport like the one wheel crew does and that's that's amazing to see too. Right. Um, I, I so think I, I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think of it as like I am creating a sport. I think that's like a super, you know. I appreciate you saying that, but 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 that's not. We're we're helping to to build the environment in which that can happen. Look, is, is how I, I appreciate I appreciate your humility there. It's nice. <laughs> it's it's good. Like yeah, it's good. I mean <laughs> like. I understand there's a team like, and I, and your team is so fun and I'm not trying to rob the, like, but it's cool knowing what you went to school to and you've got people around you helping to go after something that I don't even know if young Jack in in college thought that you would be managing a a sport that end up on ESPN that you've helped create from the bottom up, which is is stellar, bro. It's just uh, never could have never could have imagined. Yeah, but I just super very grateful to to be uh, be a part of it. Yeah, you know. Well, I appreciate you um, and, and coming on, and I know you're super busy, and you hop on a small YouTube channel to uh, talk about these things. Appreciate that. Uh, any questions you want to ask, or thoughts, or concerns you want to say to anybody before we let you get back to your life out there in California? Well, I already asked you the footholds question. Your your opinion, which I think we answered. I I thought we were rolling when that happened, but but we were pre pre rolling. <laughs> yes, you yes. kind of have answered that. Yeah, um, I'm a no foothold guy. No foothold. That's no easy to answer. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, I no, I don't have any other questions for you. Did you did you qualify for the Boston Marathon? Did you not wear the headphones? Uh, I have I have missed it by seconds. Each time, oh. yeah. Oh. Thanks for Seconds asking that on one. on the marathon. That's like that's that's slim. Yeah, but it's like where would I like? I just remember each time of the finish line, of those certain races going. I don't know where I'd find that second. Like really, I almost oh, yeah. It's just I mean, it's I'll get it. Yeah. I'll get it. I'm going. I'm I'm going to start training in May for it again. We'll see what happens. Um, I, the Holy grail in marathon running is under three hours and that's always been the goal. And I've missed it by just a few every time. And so we'll see, uh, I'm trying to beat that saying that you get slower, the older you get. And I'm lucky enough that has not come true yet. Um, every year I'm faster than my previous year, which is wonderful. Wow. And so, um, we'll see if that's true this year. Um, <laughs> We'll find out. Stay tuned. It'll be this uh, fall. I'll, I'll try to get after it. So, pulling for you. Thank you. You're I very believe. kind. You're very kind. It's 
uh, it's possible. Anybody can do it. You just got to do do the, do the work. Um, I'm trying to just pull up Instagram really quick and see if we can buzz through some of the questions. Uh, the creator of the Windman Trail Race in Wisconsin wants to know if you're going to send the factory team to race the Windman Trail, which is in Wisconsin. It's in this. It's somewhere in the fall. I can't remember the exact date, but putting that on your radar, they just want to know. Yeah, right. yeah. I think Austin Mercedes went last year, right? They did. That was right, yeah. right before the announcement. They were up here. Right. They helped right. me put a roof on my yeah, house. Sounds like an epic, an, an epic race. And That's it is. It is. Um, if I threw my, I would say send them all up there. They would. They should go. Yeah, I mean, one, and you should come up. Like the beauty of that time of year around here, it's like I've never been. I should. Oh. I should go. I've never been to a. Okay. So somehow you got to figure out in the budget to bring everybody in you up. Cause it's just nothing like, uh, up North in the fall, the leaves are popping. It's amazing. So, um, yeah. it's one of our favorite races. Um, but anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, we are somebody act, asking digital till, um, okay. Last question. I'll end with this one. Five year plan for one wheel. Got one. Five years from now, we're at 10. So we're at 15. What, what do you think? Uh, five year plan for one wheel. No, I don't have one. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having fun, trying to have fun. Uh, Thank you. yes. I want to go, I want to go to super cool places. I want to, I want to shoot really inspirational, cool content with, with fantastic riders. Yeah. Um, I want to find ways to keep, um, relating to, to new people and bring new people in. Um, yeah, I want to keep, you know, uh, building out the product line in ways that suits different styles of writing, not just yep. faster, better, stronger. Um, and, um, uh, I'd love to, um, I'd love to, to try to make one wheeling more, culturally relevant and mm. accepted. Um, yeah. And I think also it would be fantastic to um, find like some more, a solid footing on, on some of the questions about like, Oh, where can we, where can we ride on trails? I think that mm. stuff's going to, that stuff's going to, you know, come to a, a yes. come to the fore here. Um, I think, continuing to make after sales service and support easier and better for people is always great. Um, you know, particularly in, in places that like Europe are places that, you know, are sort of like underserved from that perspective. Right. Yeah. Um, and I already said, had fun, have fun, but I, I mostly, needs, that's that should mostly be the number one goal. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, people always ask me goals and I'm like, number one is always have fun. Make everything fun. If it's not fun, I don't want to do it. Even hard stuff. And I don't make it fun. I remember uh I remember um during the rider summit, you know, we're like zooming down some trail. And I remember thinking like, man, when I was twenty three years old, I would have never thought that like my, like at thirty two I would still be like zooming down a trail for a as my job. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like that was a pretty cool thought. But it'd be even cooler at 37 to be doing that still, too. So Yeah. Yeah, goal. man. Age is just a number. Yeah, we got to celebrate your birthday out there. That was that was quite fun. That's right. That's right. That was, that was, that was pretty fun. Well, Jack, we, we spoke with you a long time to get today. Thank you so much for letting us fire away questions. Uh, just that whole team out there. Joey's birthday was yesterday. That was cool to see. I don't know whose idea was the T-shirt idea. Hilarious. Um, I thought that was not your average Joe. Yeah, that was clever. Uh, uh, I, you know, you know, the story on that, the, just very quickly. I uh, want to know whenever we're in like team meetings, Tyler says that all the time, like not your average Joe. And then he, every time he like has this moment where he's like, Oh man, I messed up. He turns to Joe and he says, no offense, Joe. <laughs> and like in a serious way. And Joey yeah. thinks it's hilarious. Cause obviously Joey doesn't take that in any negative way yeah <laughs> but tyler's like so earnest when he's yeah yeah um, that's that great that came from. that's great the t-shirts were awesome joe. no offense joe 
No offense, Joe. <laughs> I mean, right there just said, tells you the vibe you guys have out there. It was Joey's birthday, and you guys got him a T-shirt. And again, some people are like, how do you know? I, I, I follow Joey on Instagram. I loved how on, on his post he had everybody's Instagram handle above everybody's head and above yours, at one wheel. <laughs> Your your handle is just yeah. I don't have I don't have I don't have an Instagram, which is which I'm so thankful for. Uh, Yes, (laughs) yes. uh, But you you should the one meal one was the was the one that took up most of my time in my in my early days. Yeah, and there it is. Like, hey, if I want to just stalk you, because really, let's be honest, one wheeling is see what I did and who am I stalking. So when you're ready to stalk right. some people, you just go on Instagram. <laughs> what are they up to? What are they doing? So, uh, and I'm part of that game, you know. I get it when I say that. I'm speaking by myself as well. So, uh, again, it's such an honor to hang with you. Um, oh wait, last football thing. We just sent you one of our uh, ex quarterbacks, Dobbs. That's and we right. got Who's one your of yours because you got rid of you got rid of Kurt too, huh? Well, he left us. Let's just make sure he broke up with us. We didn't okay. break up with him. Uh, he okay. wouldn't resign, and then Dobbs is out to you, and we got Darnold, but it wasn't in the deal. It was just how it went. Oh, you got oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, we swapped, huh? Yeah, you guys are gonna you guys are gonna draft someone. I think so. Maybe it What's feels that way. Uh, Michigan's quarterback, I like him. Um, what is his name? Oh, uh, you don't want I don't you don't want JJ McCarthy. You don't think I want McCarthy? No. Why? No. Why? What pick do you have? Do you know? Do right you know now we have eleven have? and twenty three. And so what okay, they think at 11, is at eleven, I'm ta- if I'm you, I'm taking Michael Penix. Penix, Penix I think at eleven. I think what's going to happen, we're going to take those two because we recently just got twenty three. We made a deal to get twenty three just the other day. I think we're going to smash those two together and offer it to the t- one of the top five spots. Move up and move up and, and go yeah, get. Yeah, it. You could do that. I, I can see us doing that, like to the Patriots. I could see us going into with them, um, but I could see us moving up to go get a quarterback uh, uh, of hopefully, you know, who knows? You get it. I would like, rather have Penix or Bo Nix than JJ McCarthy. I just I didn't watch a ton of Michigan games, but based on what I've seen, they just didn't trust him to throw the ball. And mm-hmm. like, if you watch that national championship game, yes, it's just like there's just not a lot of there's. I didn't see a, a player that I want on my NFL team, you know, from either team. Has, no, 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 I mean, Penix was just getting clobbered. He had no, no yeah. time to throw the ball really. Um, but, uh, no, I, I, I've seen a lot of Michael Penix and, and, uh, I'm an Oregon fan, right? I hate Washington. They're my okay. bitter rival. Um, <laughs> so I have every reason to not like that guy, but yeah. that dude is so good. And I think he's going to be a huge problem. Um, okay, I see. I got turned he's, off he's at the that type game. Of player, where like you, you, when he throws one incompletion, you're like, oh, we have a chance to get a stop here. You know, you ever felt yeah. that way against a really good quarterback? Where you're yeah. like, oh, they made a mistake. Okay, this might be we could get a stop. That's how I feel against Mahomes, right? Yes. And I don't even want to talk about that Super Bowl because that was <laughs> terrible. I'm <laughs> so sorry. It was awful. I felt so bad Three for you. Three plays. Three oh. plays. Miss PAT. Yep, can't do okay. that. This paid team means they have a score touchdown instead of kick field goal. That was, I, I mean, just <sighs> muff punt. Can't do that <laughs> in the Super muff Bowl. Punt. They, they hadn't scored a touchdown until the muff punt, and they scored like, you know, four plays later, and, and that's what opened up the floodgates. Yep. And then I think the third thing for me was coming out of halftime, we picked off Mahomes and had the ball on their 45, and we didn't get any points. Yeah. Can't do that. Those three things. If any three of those things go different, I think we have a very good chance of having a ring. And and it kills yeah. me because I hate as much as I hate losing in the Super Bowl, I also hate losing to the Chiefs even more. Oh, you do? Uh, That's what okay. It's one of your rivals. Yeah, that was tough. Like I I, I enjoyed the game one. I'm not uh, I was rooting on San Francisco because of you and Joey. Like, uh, I, I'm a Deion Sanders fan from way back in the day. Like, I have my jerseys from right. high school. And so I wore the Deion jersey just because I'm like, no, I'm going to support it for you. And then in my, uh, I thought it was a great game because it was close, but I'm also feeling yeah. if 
if that was the Vikings, I want a blowout because I want some peace because the nail biter game it would have been for you guys in, in watching all all those mistakes are a big deal in how little scoring was happening. Totally magnified. Yeah, uh, just yeah, just bummer. Now we're all back to the same. Uh, level starting over for the ring next year. I don't know what the Vikings will do if we don't get a quarterback. We're in a wee bit of pick, pickle, I think. I don't think Donald is. is we got to get a quarterback. You, I think you got all these weapons on our team and in our defense would be more stout. You don't get a quarterback. We're in, we're in trouble. So, um, it's an exciting a, time. It you is. It's possibilities. Yeah, for all of us, we're all like, yeah, this is gonna be greatest ever. And then all of a sudden, season starts. We're like, oh my gosh, this is awful. <laughs> But I have no idea why you guys want Dobbs. That was interesting to me. If he's just there to create something for the locker room backup. or something. Do you not? Was Darnold backup. your backup? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Because we got um, we got Brock. Brock yeah, Brock. I like him. I like his whole story. Mr. Irrelevant. And I so wanted him to have the ring just because I think... Anytime a story of somebody, the underdog, in that case, like I, I, I was a big fan of Brady because of his story. Even though he won and won and won, I was like, this is what we all want to do in our life. Why are we hitting the guy to do exactly what? Um, and I'm a big, I, t- big Tom Brady fan. Not yeah. a big Mahomes fan, though. I don't like Mahomes a lot. Like, yeah, I think he'll get there. I, I, I was okay with him until I watched the quarterback, and then I was like, oh, okay. Me too. Me too. He okay. seemed kind of annoying in that show. Whereas Kurt, Kurt Cousins, I didn't like know that I loved until I watched the show, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's the man." Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's what helped him get a contract. To be honest with you, is his popularity. Uh, he, obviously, yeah. his career has taken a swing. Like now, all of a sudden, the media loves him. All of a sudden, but it's like that show. I, again, I think the contrast of everybody. You start going, "Oh, this guy stands out." It's easy to like the family man, Cole's wearing guy, and then you have Mahomes, where it's like, "Wait, did I just? Re- did you just rent out the entire pumpkin patch for yourself? Because that's what it appeared like. Not a soul there. <laughs> I get it. He's he's a, he's a, a, a at a whole nother level. But just his attitude on things is like. I don't know if that's how he's winning. He's kind of annoying, a little bit annoying, you know. It's just hard to I root. Do, yeah, he's hard to root for. He's yeah. he's a, you know what it is. If I had to like really put a pin on it, is he's a little whiny for being the best. That's what that's it, is. it. It's like that's when it. Lost that when they lost that game against Buffalo during the regular season when uh, Kadarius Tony was offsides. Yeah, this season. You remember that? Of, yeah, yeah. This season. Yeah, yeah. Kyrie Tony's offsides, and they had that crazy trick play, and he got called back on a flag because he was offsides, right? Yeah. But after the game, when he went to go like shake hands with Josh Allen, he didn't say like, "Hey, man, that was an epic game." He was like, "That was bulls," you know. Yeah. He was complaining, and it's like, dude, for breaking the rule. <laughs> yeah. What are like, you com- like? What are you complaining about? And then he's in the locker totally. room saying, "These refs are awful. That play was Just- such an epic play." But it was illegal. Like, what you yeah, want them to whining, whining, cover their whining. eyes? Oh, it's Mahomes. It's okay. You you don't have to Ugh. play by these. Yeah, yeah. That really, again, I like that he can win and stuff. But it's that attitude is diminished for me in, in it. Um, and so, um, He's my wife, good. my wife's over there going, I agree. She's like, but you gotta move on. We're beating up Mahomes too much. So, okay. He's incredibly good. Yes. Well. We'll see what next year possesses for us in the football season for both teams. And um, enjoy Dobbs. I, I had no problems with him till he didn't win anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Jack. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I, I can't wait to be able to hang out with you in person again. Um, enjoy your evening in California. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Take it easy. The ladies have left us, by the way. Holly's back at the tech table, and it's just you and me. So, Okay. Thank you again, Jack. Uh, as Holly is, what Holly? Did you press a button, Hal? No, yeah. I still have yeah, Jack's right there. She's saying, "All right, everybody else, thank you so much for watching with us. Thank you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Do all the YouTube stuff, and we'll be now. We'll be here tomorrow with Austin and Mercedes talking about their race over this past weekend. Everybody, adios. Bye now. You.